So homework 36, we're going to multiply our rational expressions, multiply our fractions. First thing we're going to do is see if we can do any reducing. So you said 7 goes into 7 once, into 14 two times. Now we're also going to do some canceling with our variables, but since we have them in there in multiple places, I like to go ahead and multiply across the top and across the bottom first and put everything in order. So on the top I've got 2 times 2, which is 4. I've got a b to the fifth, and then I've got a c times another c, so c to the second. On the bottom, I've got a c to the third and a b to the second, but I like to put them in order so everything lines up nice, so I'm going to put the b squared first and then the c to the third. Now we've already reduced down our numbers, so now we just have to worry about doing the variables. We remember here that when we're doing this, we're subtracting the smaller one from the bigger one. If I've got five b's on top and two on the bottom, I can take two of them out of there, which leaves me a b to the third up on top, right? On my c's, I've got c to the second on top and c to the third on the bottom. I can take out two of them, which leaves me a c to the first or just plain c on the bottom. So my answer here is that I have 4b to the third over c. All right, so now we'll get a little bit longer one here down on the next one. First thing I want to do is see if I can do any canceling with my numbers so my numbers aren't so big before I multiply. So if I reduce my numbers, I can do what? Cancel the 2 and make a 1. 2 goes into 2 once. And 4 and twice. And 4 two times. And then the 5, 1. 5 goes into 5 once and, and into 15. 15 3. 3 times. <clears throat> so now if I go ahead and multiply across the top, I'm going to have what? 3. You want to put the variables in there too? Yep. So we got y to the third and b to the fifth. Okay. Which them should be in order alphabetically. That's okay. We'll just point right the other ones the other way around. Okay. So on the bottom, what are we left with? We're going to have 2BY. 2B and Y. So when we look there, we can cancel out 1B. 1B, which leaves me B to the fourth. B to the fourth up on top and 1Y. 1Y. Which is Y squared. So my answer. 3y squared b to the fourth over 2. <clears throat> there it is. Hmm. All right, one more of those, number three. Number three, what are we going to do with that one? We're going to reduce the 2 to a 1 and the 6 to a 3, the 5 to a 1 and the 10 to a 2. Okay. Then we're going to have 3ax. What are we going to no, have? We're going to have 2ax. 2ax, because we're multiplying. Yes. Over 3ax squared. Okay, so what can I do with that? You can cancel out the a and cancel out 1x. And I'm left with 2 over 3x. 2 over 3x. Exactly. All right, those weren't so bad, right? No, they were very easy. Okay, well, good, because in the next one we're doing dividing. <laughs> and we know that when we divide, we just flip the second fraction and do the same thing we just did. So we, right? we still do the so we're going to, yep, we got to do the reciprocal of the one after the division sign, because dividing is multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay. So 5a to the fifth x over 4x to the fifth times the reciprocal. So 8x over a to the third. So now we're going to do the same thing we did on the previous ones. Oh yeah, the 4 can go down to a 1 and 8 to a 2. Okay, so on the top we would have 
10. Uh, a to the fifth, x squared. Mm -hmm. On the bottom, 9. 9, where are you getting a 9 from? A 1 times 9. That's oh, that's an A. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an A to the third, and an X to the fifth, right? So, reducing that, what are we going to do? We're going to knock out three A's. Which gives me A squared on top. A squared, and two X's, which is three on the bottom. Yep, so my answer would be... My board went crazy on me. <laughs> uh, just jumped right to a whole different spot. 10a squared over x to the third. All right. <clears throat> Number five then. Again, we're dividing fractions. Whenever there's a dividing, we're going to invert that second fraction and multiply. So 2y over 5b times 15b to the fifth y squared over 4y. And what can we do with that? The 5 to a 1 and the 15 to a 3, the 2 to a 1 and the 4 to a 2. Okay, so we would get 3 b to the fifth, y to the third. Over. Over. 2by. Okay. And so with that, knock out the b, knock it a 4, and knock out the y and make it a square. So my answer is 3b to the 4th y squared over 2. 3b to the 4th y squared over 2. Easy as that. <laughs> so, number 6. What should I do with number 6? Uh, 3y over 4x. So 8x cubed y to the 4th over 9y times 3y over 4x. Multiply by our reciprocal, and so we can do what? This will the 8 to a 2, and the 4 to a 1, the 9 to a 3, and the 3 to a 1. Okay. So we have 2x to the third, y to the fifth. Over. 3xy. I must have liked that that day where just they had a plain x and a plain y. <laughs> mm -hmm. So reducing that down. No. squared, y to the fourth over three. All right, so that wasn't so bad. They looked way scarier than they actually were, right? They always do. Always <laughs> do. The next one's talking about the LCM. LCM stands for least common multiple. We probably way back in the review section already did the least common multiple where we just had numbers. We said, okay, multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Multiples of 8, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. 40 ah, 40 is my least common multiple. So my least common multiple 
of 10m to the fourth and 8a to the third is going to include 40, which is the least common multiple of the numbers, with the variables you have to include all of the variables to the higher exponent because multiples are bigger. Factors we do smaller, multiples we do bigger. In this case, we have an m to the fourth and an a to the third, and we have to include them both. It's like when you're doing the least common multiple of 2 and 3, you have to take 2 times 3 because they don't have anything in common. Now number 8, if I'm doing my least common multiple of 12y squared and 9y to the fourth, the least common multiple of the 12 and the 9 would be So you said 12 times 1 is 12, and 9 didn't go into 12. 12 times 2 is 24, but 9 doesn't divide into 24. 12 times 3 is 36. 36. 9 goes into 36 four times, right? So 36 is going to be my least common multiple. Now this time my variables are the same. So when I'm thinking multiples, I'm thinking bigger. So I have to use the bigger exponent, so y to the fourth. So we did greatest common factor. Factors are smaller. Here we're doing least common multiple. Multiples are bigger. So number nine, if I'm doing the least common multiple of 7m squared and 4m to the fourth, I would have 4 divided into 21? Nope. 28. 28. 4 and 7 didn't have anything in common, so that's what I ended up doing, is taking 7 times 4. My least common multiple, if I have an m squared and an m to the fourth, I'm going to use? M to the fourth. M to the fourth, because I've got to use the higher one. Exactly. 10, 11, 12, same thing, just little longer expressions. I'm still doing my least common multiple. So if I have 2u to the 4th, x to the 9th, and 10u, w to the 4th, and x to the 5th, my least common multiple of 2 and 10 would be? One. Nope, that's a factor. <laughs> If you were finding your common denominator, if you had one half and one tenth, what would you use? Five. No. No. Two. No. Those are factors. Factors are smaller. <laughs> so what are your multiples? Ten. ten. Right. Your multiples of two, two, yep. four, six, eight, ten. Oh, I happen to hit ten. So since two does divide into ten, I'm using the 10 because i got to use the bigger one because it's a multiple. Okay. <laughs> then on my variables, I want every single one of the variables that are there to the higher exponent. So I'm going to have u to the fourth, u to the fourth w, w to the fourth, w to the fourth, and x to the ninth. And x to the ninth, exactly. I had u's, I had w's, and I had x's. I have to use the highest one of each. So number 11, finding the least common multiple of 6v to the 8th, w to the 8th, y to the 6th, and 8w to the 9th, y to the 5th. So my least common multiple of 6 and 8. 24. 24, exactly. 24 on my variables. Mm -hmm. W9 and Y6. 
So we get 24 v to the 8th, w to the 9th, and y to the 6th. And number 12, doing the same thing. I am looking for the least common multiple of 2u to the 4th, w to the 5th, and 12u to the 4th, v to the 6th, w to the 3rd. 12. So 12. to the fourth. U to the fourth. W to the fifth. And B to the sixth. Exactly. Twelve U to the fourth, W to the fifth, B to the sixth. Alright. The next ones then have to do with adding fractions. We know that when we add fractions we have to have a common denominator. We do. What we want to realize is if there is a negative out in front, we have to distribute it. So what we want to think about is like this, one big problem. 8a is my denominator. And I'm going to have a minus sign, 6a minus 10x, and then I have a minus sign, and 8a plus 7x. So I put the minus and then I put parentheses around my tops. Now I have to get rid of those parentheses by using my distributive property. So, this would be negative 6a, and then a negative and a negative make that a positive 10x. This would be negative 8a, and a negative and a positive make that negative 7x. Then I'm going to combine my like terms. Negative 8a, or negative 6a minus 8a would be negative 14a. Positive 10x minus 7x is a positive 3x. All over my 8a. Now the only way I can simplify that is if all three terms are divisible by the same thing. They're not, so I can't reduce it down any without separating that into two separate fractions, which we're not going to do. But you do have to be careful when you type this in. Notice where this negative is. It's up on top with the 14. It's not in front of the fraction. So when you type it in, I suggest you hit the fraction thing first, then type the top in separately so that the negative doesn't end in front. It, it ends up on the top with the 14 because that's where it's supposed to be. So just watch for that when you type it in. Because normally if you type negative 14a and you hit fraction, the negative stays in front but we, we need it on the top. Okay. Okay, so hit the fraction button first and then type in the top and the bottom. Alright, so number 14, same thing. My denominator is 5a. This one has a minus sign in front, and so in parentheses, 4a minus 2b. This one has a plus sign in front, in parentheses, 8a minus 7b. So, Getting rid of our parentheses, what would we have up on top? We're going to have a negative 4a mm -hmm. and a positive 2b. Yep. And then we're going to have a positive 8a yep. and a negative 7b. Exactly. So now combining my like terms, I'm going to get a negative 4a. Do that again. Mm, negative 4 plus 8. Is a positive, positive right? Because yep. I have to have the sign of the larger. So positive 4a. Negative 5. Negative 5b over, over 5a. 5a. And again, I can't reduce this down because I have to divide all three of them by the same thing and all three of them don't have anything in common. This would be a 10a, then I could reduce them all down by 5. But in this case, can't reduce it, just going to leave that for my answer. Okay, are they going to have some of that on there? Yes, they will. Uh, on occasion, it won't happen a lot. But on occasion, they will have one, just for fun. B 
before we do 15. They might have something like this. You might get 3a minus 6b over 9a, where all of your numbers can be reduced. If that happens, you're going to say, oh, 3 goes into here once, into here two times, and into there three times. So in simplest form, I would have a minus 2b over 3a. Won't happen a lot, but it is something you need to watch for because the directions do say simplify as much as possible. So if all three of my numbers are divisible by the same thing, I'm going to reduce it. Fifteen, last one on this page then. What should we do to start that one out? Parentheses because they're both positive, right? So we're going to have the 8c minus 11d, yep. and then we're going to have minus in between oh. 6c minus 6d, right? So we're just putting parentheses around the tops of those fractions, and if there's any signs in front, bringing them up because then we have to distribute. <laughs> and so, now this one didn't have any sign in front which means I can just get rid of my parentheses, it's really a plus, but 8c minus 11d, right? Nothing I have to do to that one. But the other one has that minus sign in front, so we're going to write that as? Negative 6c plus 6d. Exactly. We have to change those signs since there's a minus in front. Now we can combine our like terms. Six would be a positive two C, mm -hmm. and negative eleven plus six would be a negative five. Negative five D over four C. And again, I can't reduce that one because all three of my terms are not divisible by the same thing. So that's going to be my answer, as simplified as I could do it. All right, so that'll be the next five things there on your pie chart.